What's up and welcome to the comparison between the 10R, 10S and 10S Max. We're going to see how these phones stack up when it comes to design, display, performance, battery life, camera, special features and value. The really surprising thing about the 10R that Apple probably doesn't want you to know is that it actually beats the 10S and 10S Max in a couple of categories. Without further ado, let's hop right into it. Let's talk about design first. Now all three of these phones have a small bezel around the outside, but the 10R's bezel bezel is slightly bigger. Now the 10R has a 6.1 inch display, the 10S has a 5.8 inch display, and the 10S Max has a 6.5 inch display. All three of the displays have a notch. The screen to body ratio on all three devices is quite good, but it's actually a little bit different on each one. The 10R has a 79% screen to body ratio, the 10S has an 83%, and the 10S Max has the best at 84%. Now all three devices feature glass on the front and back and comes with key wireless charging. Now all three of these phones feature the world's most durable glass on any smartphone ever, according to Apple. Mainly Apple is claiming that their glass is more durable than Gorilla Glass 5. .0, which is currently on most Android smartphones. We'll have to see how durable it actually is when it comes to doing drop tests, which I will be doing soon when those phones come out. Now the 10R features six different colors, while the 10S and 10S Max only have three colors. Now when it comes to design, all three are very similar, but I gotta say the 10S Max wins out by just a hair because of the larger screen. I really love larger displays and the fact that it has the best screen to body ratio. Now when it comes to the display, all three devices this year are gonna be quite good. Now the 10S and 10S Max feature high quality OLED panels with 458 PPI while the 10R features an LCD IPS display with only 326 PPI. Now many people will say that the lower resolution is a deal breaker but I think online reviewers and consumers are in a pixel peeping obsession right now. Now studies have shown that when you hold the phone one foot from your face it's impossible for the average human eye to tell anything beyond on 287 PPI, which is again why Apple called their iPhone 4 the Retina Display when it had 326 PPI because it was impossible for the human eye to distinguish it anyway. So unless you have above average human eyesight or you hold the phone a lot closer to your face than one foot, you're not gonna be able to tell a difference in the levels of PPI. So that means the main difference between these two displays is the OLED panel versus LCD. Now in the past, OLED panels have tended to be quite a bit brighter than LCDs, but that isn't the case this time. This LCD is a super bright 625 nits, which matches the same specs as the 10S and 10S Max. In short, the 10S and 10S Max have better displays, yes, but I don't think anyone would be disappointed with the 10R display anyway. So if you want the very best, get the 10S, but if you're on any kind of a budget, don't feel bad about picking up the 10R because of its display. Now, when it comes to performance, all three of these phones have the new A12 Bionic chip. Now, when compared to the A11 from last year, it's supposed to be 30% faster opening apps, 15% faster overall, and it's supposed to have a 50% more powerful GPU. Now in the vast majority of games out there, this new processor is going to run at 60 frames per second across all three devices. But in especially demanding titles such as Fortnite, where the iPhone 10 struggled to hit 30 FPS consistently, the 10S and 10S Max will probably do better, probably closer to 45 frames per second consistently. But because the 10R has a lower resolution, that means in super demanding games like Fortnite, the 10R will actually have significantly more FPS than the 10S and 10S Max. At least that's my guess. And again, because the human eye can't see beyond 287 PPI anyway, in my opinion, the 10R is gonna be the best performing phone out there which is kind of hilarious because it's Apple's cheapest phone. Now, how much performance increase are we gonna see? It's gonna be hard to say. So I just calculated up the number of pixels. The iPhone 10R has 1.48 million pixels, the 10S has 2.74, and the 10S Max has 3.33 million pixels pixels, which means that if you're playing high performance demanding 3D titles at native resolution, the 10R will outperform the 10S Max by more than twice the number of frames per second. Now, of course, the developers of those games could reduce the resolution on the 10S Max to match the 10R, but if you're not playing at native resolution, you're introducing a lot of fuzziness and dramatically reduced clarity to the gameplay. So in short, yes, all three phones are gonna have the same A12 Bionic chip, but in certain instances, the 10R should vastly outperform the 10S and 10S Max, 
when it comes to 3D performance. Now when it comes to battery life, the 10R actually outperforms the 10S and 10S Max once again. Now this is according to Apple's official stats on their website. The 10R is rated for 15 hours of internet and 16 hours of video playback. The 10S on the other hand is only rated for 12 hours of internet and 14 hours of video playback. While the 10S Max has 13 hours of internet and 15 hours of video playback. Now we don't know the MAH battery size for these devices yet, but I think the main difference here in battery life is because of that increased resolution that the 10S and 10S Max have. The reduced resolution of the 10R just allows it to run much more efficiently overall, providing better battery life. Now when it comes to the camera, all three devices have the same 7 megapixel front camera and same 12 megapixel main back camera. But the 10S and 10S Max have an additional 12 megapixel telephoto zoom camera. Now this extra camera allows for optical zoom and for depth sensing in portrait mode. Now the 10R utilizes software machine learning for the depth sensing in portrait mode, which is the same thing that Google used in the Pixel 2 XL. Based on the sample images that Apple has shared with us so far, I would argue that the 10S and 10S Max are gonna have slightly better portrait photos, and obviously that optical zoom is nice, Overall, for 90% of the photos that everyone takes, it's gonna be identical between these three phones, but for those specific instances when you wanna zoom in on something or you're taking a portrait photo, the 10S and 10S Max should be just slightly better. Now, as far as special features go, the main difference here is the lack of 3D touch on the 10R. The 10R relies on haptic feedback with long presses. So, for example, on the lock screen, if you wanna open the camera, you just hold your finger on it for a second and then it goes into the camera mode rather than doing a quick hard press on the camera in order to open it. Overall, I think this is very minor, but the 10S and 10S Max definitely went out here because it's a whole feature that's missing from the 10R in this instance. So now let's talk value. This is one of the most important things about buying a phone. How much is it gonna cost you and how much value is it gonna provide to you for the money? The 10R is gonna cost you $749 for the 64 gigabyte and goes up to 899 for the 256 gig. The 10S is gonna cost 999 for the 64 and go up to 1340 for the 512 gig and the 10s max is going to cost you a whopping 1099 for the 64 gig and go up to 1449 for the 512 gig version when it comes to value the 10r clearly wins out at 250 dollars cheaper than the 10s and 350 dollars cheaper than the 10s max if you're on a budget the 10r is the obvious choice so let's recap scoreboard who won each category when it comes to design the 10s max has the largest display and and the best screen to body ratio. For the display, the OLED panels on the 10S and 10S Max win out for sure, but don't discount the 10R just because of its lower resolution and LCD display, it's still quite good. When it comes to performance, all three devices have the A12 Bionic chip, but because of the 10R's reduced resolution, we should expect better performance in demanding 3D titles and slightly better performance in day-to-day -day use, but we won't know how much a performance difference it'll be until the 10R comes out and we can do some performance performance tests. When it comes to battery life, Apple rates the 10R at being slightly better battery than the 10S and 10S Max. When it comes to the camera, the 10S and 10S Max are going to have the best overall versatility due to their dual camera setup on the back. Now the only difference in special features is the lack of 3D touch on the 10R which is minor, but the 10S and 10S Max win out here. Overall, if you're on a budget, the winner is quite clear. The 10R is just a better bang for the buck. So here's what it comes down to. If you have an unlimited budget, here's how these phones line up. The 10S and 10S Max are going to have the better quality OLED display. If you prefer a large phone like me, the 10S Max is just the winner. It beats the 10S and the 10R simply because of that larger display. If you value having the best possible camera, the 10S and 10S Max are going to be slightly better. But if you want the best value bang for the buck, the best potential performance in demanding 3D titles, the best potential battery life. I believe the 10R is the winner between these three phones, which is really crazy, again, because it's the cheapest of the three. Normally, the more expensive devices would win out in all of the categories, but because of the resolution difference, the 10R actually gets an advantage in some of these, which is really, really surprising. So between these three phones, which one would you pick? Let me know in the comments down below and take the poll in the top right. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison breakdown. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, be sure to smash that like button. If you want to see more, hit that subscribe button and tap the notification bell. We'll see you guys in the next one. Brandon out.